So wrapping up a few videos here on cholesterol, we've talked about how we get sort of cholesterol in from your bloodstream, right, through receptor-mediated endocytosis. We've talked about sort of diseases that sort of relate to whether or not you're able to effectively uptake or offload cholesterol. And so this last video sort of discusses how cholesterol has a feedback mechanism to either activate or inhibit sort of our endogenous production of cholesterol. So just kind of coming back to this receptor-mediated endocytosis video here, right? The very last piece that we sort of talked about in this pathway is once we have cholesterol sort of into your cytosol, cholesterol can sort of regulate the synthesis of genes that, you know, will determine whether we're not making, we're making more cholesterol or not. So for example, if we've got plenty of cholesterol because receptor mediated endocytosis has brought in a lot, then we are going to be decreasing the synthesis of the genes that are responsible for making cholesterol because we don't need to. Right? We've often talked about regulating biochemical pathways at the, um, activation level, determining the activity of a protein, whether it's active or not, this is actually controlling availability, right? And so that enzyme is not going to be available to do its rate controlling synthesis of cholesterol if we have plenty of cholesterol in the body. So what we're really going to do now is just, you know, because we don't talk about too much genetics in, in this class anyway, we're going to talk just a little bit about how cholesterol can sort of feedback and regulate um, in a transcriptional way the synthesis of the genes that would be necessary to, for the biosynthesis of cholesterol. So I know that there's a lot in this slide here, so we're going to sort of pick it apart piece by piece. And the first piece that I kind of want to highlight for you is it's really all about this guy right here. So this um, is specifically the uh, section of this orange protein that I've highlighted. So let's identify what this orange protein is first. SREBP stands for sterol regulating element binding protein. So sterol regulating element binding protein which is why we call it SREBP, because <laughs> the rest is a lot to say. So basically, this piece right here, specifically this domain here, so this BHLH stands for a basic helix loop helix domain. This is a transcriptional activator. Okay, so remember how genes, DNA, is transcribed into messenger RNA, that messenger RNA is translated into protein. So we always have the blueprint to make the enzymes for, you know, synthesizing cholesterol in our body, but those genes might not always be active. Okay, so highlighting here, this little guy right here, if he gets to go into the nucleus, okay, bind to the sterile recognition element, that is going to upregulate the synthesis of genes to make cholesterol. So the key here, okay, the key, the key is in the absence of cholesterol, we are going to upregulate the synthesis of genes to make cholesterol. Or said another way, in the presence of cholesterol, we are going to inhibit the synthesis of genes to make cholesterol. Okay, so it's really all about whether or not we have cholesterol. Okay, so let's sort of talk about this process here. Okay, so another enzyme or another um, protein we need to identify here, SCAP. Okay, so this acronym is a mouthful too. This is SREBP cleavage activating protein. So cleavage activating protein. OK, 
okay? So right now, this has the ability to bring in or recruit um, a protease or a couple of proteases. So the last little piece here to highlight here is this domain right here. I'm gonna call the babysitter. Okay, because when this domain is connected to this um, basic helix loop helix domain, which remember that's the transcriptional activator, when it's babysitting it, it's not going and doing its um, transcriptional activation sort of piece. Okay, and notice that when we have cholesterol here, it's quieting this whole process. We're not going to have any of the other pieces that I'm talking about happen. Okay, so here's what happens. In the absence of cholesterol, right? We said in the absence of cholesterol, we want to make these genes. So in the absence of cholesterol, we are gonna be moving down here. So maybe let's go in and highlight that. In the absence of cholesterol, this is what's happening here. Okay, we're gonna be going down here. So what's gonna be happening is this cleavage activating protein, okay, this SCAP is gonna be recruiting a protease. So this protease is going to come along. This protease has a little um, domain here that's going to be able to slip into that lipid bilayer and it's going to be adjacent then to this little loop domain. Okay and what it's going to do is it's a serine protease. It's going to cut protein so it's going to cut right here and that disconnects the babysitter. So we're going to disconnect our babysitter. Okay, and now what can happen is within the endoplasmic reticulum, this piece can sort of float along. It's got sort of this hydrophobic sort of domain there that allows it to maintain and be embedded in the lipid bilayer, but it can dissociate from sort of the rest of this babysitter. So it dissociates from the babysitter, and then we're going to have another protease sort of come in here. This time it's a metalloprotease, but this one is going to snip very close to the... Um, this hydrophobic domain, such that we can release this basic helix loop helix domain. And then that can go to the nucleus, bind to its sterile recognition element, and then upregulate the synthesis of genes to make cholesterol. So again, highlighting what this last piece does, this, this metalloprotease is going to disconnect from the lipid bilayer, which really is in the endoplasmic reticulum. That's where that lipid bilayer is. <clears throat> it's gonna allow the basic helix loop helix domain to go to the nucleus, okay? And then it's going to increase the synthesis of genes to make cholesterol. So interesting story, just because most of the time we've sort of talked about regulating um, metabolism through regulating the activity of enzymes, right? Phosphostate versus dephosphostate. We're just taking enzymes and maybe turning them on or turning them off, but basically not recreating or, dis or, or destroying an enzyme. And that's truly what we're thinking about is happening here, um, is we're talking about either upregulating or inhibiting the synthesis of um, uh, the genes that are going to make the proteins that are responsible for cholesterol biosynthesis.